Hello and welcome to this video on the area of non-right angle triangles. Now we've previously seen how we can find the area of a triangle if we have the base and the perpendicular height, so that's a right angle there. And we just do half times that base times that height. But what if we didn't know the perpendicular height? So let's say that was the base of this triangle, the perpendicular height would be this length here, not that length A there. But if we have the length of two sides and we have the angle between them, then there's a really nice formula we can use, and it's just this. We just do half times the product of the two sides, so half times A times B, and then we times it by the sine of that angle. And note that that angle theta, that's a Greek letter, theta, has to be between those two sides here. So the angle couldn't be here, for example. So use this formula here to solve some of these problems. So this first one, well, we've got two sides and we do have the angle between them. So we could just do half times the four times the five times the sine of the angle between them and we get 5.74 centimetres squared to three significant figures. Now what about this second one? This time we're given the area of the triangle and we want to find this angle. So we're told that the area is 16. Well how would we usually find the area given this information here? Well we can use half times one of the lengths times the other length times the sine of the angle between them, sine of x, we don't know what x is yet, but we know that gives you an area of 16, so we know the area this time, and then we just have to solve this. Well, if we just simplify this, half times 5 times 7 is 17.5, so we've got 17.5 sine x is equal to 16, and then, well, sine of x is being multiplied by 17.5, so we could get rid of that by dividing by 17.5. So if I do 16 divided by 17.5, that gives 0 0.91429. And then to get rid of that sine in front of the x, we do inverse sine of each side. So we do inverse sine of that number. I get 66.1 degrees to three significant figures. What about question three? We're told that the area is 15.4 and we want to determine the length of AC, this length here. So let's just call that X and we need to find X, but we know that the area is equal to 15.4. So if we use that information using the usual formula, we know that half times one of the sides, six, times another side, X, times the sine of the angle between them, sine of 40, gives you the area, so 15.4. And now we just have to solve to find x. So we could divide both sides to get x on its own by sine of 40, 6 and half. So we could say that x is equal to 15.4 divided by all of these things. Well, half times 6 is just 3, so it'd be 3 sine 40. And then that is going to give us 7.99 to three significant figures. And that is the answer. What about question four? Now, do you remember that if you have a kind of like pizza slice shape, we call that a sector. It says OAB is a sector. And we want to determine the area of the segment shade. Remember, a segment is the area between a chord of a circle, a line that connects two points in the circumference, and the circumference. So that area between them shaded is called a segment. Now let's think how we could sort of make that segment. We could start with the area of the sector and then just cut out, wipe out the triangle and that will just leave the shaded segment there. So we need to first find the area of the sector. So the area of the sector, now we explore this in another video, but basically you just start with the area of a full circle and then you do the appropriate fraction of it. What fraction of a full circle do we have? Well, we have 73 sixtieths because a full circle would be an angle here of 360 degrees. So you want 73 sixtieths of the area of a full circle. Well, the area of a full circle is pi r squared, so pi times 3.2 squared. And I'm just going to work that out. And that gives you 6.25526. We don't want any rounding errors yet, so make sure you give as many digits as you can. And now we want to find the area of the triangle. So the area of the triangle 
just going to use a triangle symbol. Well, if that's a radius of a circle, this is also the radius, so that's also 3.2. So we just use our usual formula. It's half times one of the sides, 3.2, times another side, so 3.2 again, we could just write 3.2 squared, because we're timesing by it twice, times by the sine of the angle between them, 70 degrees. And that gives us 4.81123. So therefore, the shaded area, the segment, is equal to, or well, we just subtract them, so it's going to be 6.25526, minus 4.81123, and we get 1.44, the unit is centimetres, so it's centimetres squared, to three significant figures. What about question five? We've got this triangle here, I'm just going to copy it out, and we want to find the area. Now the problem is we can't directly use our formula half AB sine theta because although we have these two sides here, we don't have the angle between the two sides. We need this angle to be between these two sides to use the formula directly. So we have two choices here. We could either try and find this length here because then we have two lengths and an angle between them. We can use the formula. Or we could find this angle here between these two sides. So we can go for either option. I'm going to try and find this angle here. Now, can we've got a side and an opposite angle. So we've got a side and an opposite angle. I'm just going to label this angle x. So we could find x using the sine rule. Remember, when we have a side angle pair, side angle pair, then you can use the sine rule. So I'm going to do sine of x over the length of the opposite side is equal to sine of the other angle over the length of the opposite side. Do you remember when you're trying to find an angle using the sine rule, we put the sine of the angles at the top and we put their opposite sides, the length of their opposite sides in the denominators. So we want to get x on its own, so we need to times by 4 to get rid of this over 4, so sine of x is equal to, well if we times this by 4 we could just put the 4 at the top, and then we do inverse sine of both sides to get rid of that sine, so x is equal to inverse sine of all of this malarkey. And that is equal to 41.6156. I'm going to give as many digits off the decimal place as I can to avoid any further rounding errors. Now, because we know this angle and this angle, we can actually work out this angle, can't we? So if I call that angle, say, y, then we know y is just 180 minus the other angle, so minus 85 minus 41.6156. And that gives you 53.6156. 3844 degrees. And now, look, we've got an angle between two sides, so we can find the area. The area is going to be half times one of the sides, times another side, times the sine of the angle between them, which we worked out was 53.3844. Do not use a rounded number for that angle. And then if I just type that in, that gives me 9.63 to three significant figures. Now for this last question, we have some algebraic sides. So we, given this triangle here, we've got an angle of 60, and we have lengths of x plus two and two x plus two, and we're told we have an area of six root three. So don't be upset by the fact we have algebraic sides. We use exactly the same principle. It's just we're gonna end up with an algebraic equation. So we do the usual thing, half times this length, x plus 2, I'm, in fact I'm just going to use brackets, multiplied by the other length, multiplied by the sine of the angle, because that's the formula for the area of a triangle, and we're told that area is equal to 6 root 3, so let's write that here. Now let's just try and simplify. I did a video on exact trigonometric values, and we found that that was root 3 over 2. So we're going to replace that with root 3 over 2. And we can also expand out these brackets, can't we? So we've got x times 2x, which is 2x squared. We've got x times 2, which is 2x, plus 2 times 2x, which is 4x. So in total, that's 6x. And we've also got 2 times 2, which is 4. Now, I don't like this over 2, and I don't like this over 2. We don't like fractions and equations. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 4, and that will get rid of both of those over 2s. So I'm going to now have 2x squared plus 6x plus 4. And that's being still multiplied by, by root 3. And 6 root 3 times 4 is 24 root 3. 
Now, I notice on both sides we're multiplying by root 3, so we could divide both sides by root 3 to leave 2x squared plus 6x plus 4 equals 24. Now, this is a quadratic equation, and to solve a quadratic equation, we want 0 on one side. So we subtract 24 to get 2x squared plus 6x minus 20 is equal to 0. And we might notice that all of these are divisible by 2. So I could divide everything by 2, and 0 divided by 2 is still 0. And this nicely factorises. We need two numbers that add to give the 3, multiply to give the minus 10. That is x plus 5 and x minus 2. Now we've got the product of two things is 0, so one of those two things has to be 0. If x plus 5 is 0, the next would be minus 5. If x minus 2 was 0, the next would be 2. Now, often when you're solving a quadratic in an applied setting, one of these values is applicable and the other one isn't. So let's see which one is valid. Now we've got a length here, for example, of x plus 2. Now if x was minus 5, minus 5 plus 2 is minus 3. That's a negative value. We can't have negative length, so it must be this value of x here. I tend to put a strike through the solution that we don't want. So the examiner can still see that you've written that solution, but that you've rejected it.